Shalom family. I um ah, thank you so much for um the blessings and um you know watching and supporting and um being part of um this family, right? This branch of the family. I did talk, um, I promised to bring feng shui to you guys, right? Which I'm doing, you know, I have, I still have, um, uh, let me see, let me open feng shui. I still have the, um, I still have, oh, it was right there. I still have the um, the idea to do that, which this is the video I'm doing right now. Um, the thing is, what's really interesting, doing my research to do feng shui. Oh, um, let me explain with the colors. Um, I um, found out that, you know, I can wear, you know, like I said, I can wear bottom as long as I have white as the um, dominant. So I just, um, I've kept praying because I just don't see, sometimes I do see myself wearing all white, but I just can't see myself wearing all white because I, I see that it, it is, um, is doing something to me. Um, but I'll explain in the video of colors and why it's important to wear all colors, okay? So I'll explain that. But um, also um, some other stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. But um, doing the feng shui, I know that um, we always thought, oh, always known that the Igbos in Nigeria are connected to, to the 12 tribes, right? Mm. So, um, and when you the feng shui, they talk about chi a lot. They even call they have something called tai chi. They have all these chi stuff. Let me see if I can make this. Oops, excuse me, a little better so you guys can see me better. Okay, they have a lot of chi this, chi that, chi this, right? So I wanted to um, uh, find out about you know, the connection between the Igbo people and the Asian, you know, the Asian area wide um, chi, they, you know, chi is like the same concept, but the only thing is that they, I will show you how they switch. Instead of saying that the chi um, is like an um, the angels, you know, the guardian angels that we have <laughs> that work, walks with us, the guys, spirit guys and all that, they call it, and um, Asian call it energy. So they switch it to calling it energy because they know we know that the, uh, they trying to cover it up because it came from us, you know the um, the stuff came from us. So therefore, they they want to switch it up. They want to um, make it as if is they have nothing to do with us, you know, to the evil people um, that is. Um, is um you know just energy right so it's not um and it's not you know spirits you know stuff like that it's just energy so i want to talk to you guys about um i don't i'm i'm not sure if i i want to oh that was a match okay i want to talk to you guys about um chi uh the chi oh i almost bite my um, um, let me see if I can make this make room for that because the writings are too close. I need um, space for me to be able to read better. Okay. So then after I talk about the Chi, um, the Igbo people, um, I want to talk about Feng Shui. Or should I talk about feng shui and then the Igbo people? But since we were the first on earth, so I think that I'm going to talk about 
the Igbo people. And then I'll talk about feng shui, right? I want to explain, I think I should explain to us what it is, what, what he means, um, uh, what does the uh, that stuff mean uh, when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to, uh, what is that called? Um, our people and how they they've been stealing our in our stuff or our ideas or culture and calling it theirs so i want to um, bring that out right so first um and foremost let's let me um ask a question how are you guys doing with all the stuff that's going on there's a lot going on right now and there's a lot of misconception. There's a lot of um, um, distraction right now um, to try and really what they trying to do is to get us off track to focus on things that don't really matter for, to us, right? But we don't want to do that. We, we want to um, focus on what's really important and that's the father and how we're going to get to to him and um, understand uh, uh, and uh, understand um, the messages he's given us, right? So let's talk about Igbo. What is the meaning of chi in the Igbo culture, right? So this one right here, I'm reading it, but I, from what I understand about the chi, I don't agree so much. I think it's misleading and and is there's some inaccurate and. Um, um, information in that one, that statement, but I want you I want to read it to you so you guys kind of see how they always trying to minimize or trying to um, stereotype or um, hmm, I, I want to say dirty, but there's a um, filth, <laughs> filthy or, or culture or, or something that have to do with us, I guess. I don't know, um, but you guys, I guess you guys can kind of figure out what I'm trying to say, but they say the chi is essential. Now, let me, before I even go there, let me say this, okay? Uh, we know the Igbo people are really uh, hard workers. They love to uh, work and and make and make money. They love to work and make money. They're hard workers, right? But I will shock you guys later on through my, um, through my uh, what is it? Research. Yes, research. And you guys will see how um oh who is the father of the evil people Yay! i think that's a pretty good thing i think um maybe i should have some music because it's kind of like let me let me see if i can play some music huh how about that i i think that um i think i should find something um to play on YouTube, you know, like maybe some kind of um, uh, relaxing music, because it's kind of like it's. I feel it's feel kind of dull. Okay, let's play some uh, meditating pure. Okay, let's do this one, and I'm gonna turn it down because I want us to have. I want us to hear. I want us to have some something in the background, right? Very nice, right? Very soothing versus just, you know, whatever, which isn't bad. Okay, so let's go. The uh, chi is a, because that's sounding a little bit higher. I think it's going to get a little higher. Chi is a central point in the psychologic, um, psychologic, psychology, no, psychology, thought, and belief of the Igbo people. Recognize it has been, recognize it as being responsible for their wealth and prosperity, life and health, success and failures, and for all their futures of no for and all for their fortunes and misfortunes in general 
the evil consider chi as a sole controller of their life affair. Somewhat true, but I I don't think that's all of it, right? According to the Igbo culture, a person she is a personification of the, that individual fate, which is created for an individual life success, misfortune, and failures. The Igbo believe that their success in life is determined by their chi and that no man can rise past the greatness of his or her own chi. Chi is uh, is derived from Afri African Igbo origin. In Nigeria, Chi referred to a, uh, to a type of gu guardian angel. Guardian angel. Chi is also a vital force that uh, Taoists, um, Taoists, and other Chinese religion believe to be inherent inherent in all all things right so you notice that they put the chinese there right okay what is the main god of Igbo? chuku 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 is uh so let me spell chuku it's c-h-u-k-u i mean k-w so chuku is a supreme being of Igbo spirituality. In the Igbo um, pantheon, Chuku is the source of all other Igbo deities and is responsible for assigning them their different tasks. So, I'm, I'm, what I'm, I'm hearing is that um, Chuku is like the god who is the one assigning the chi to different tasks. Because from what I understand and in, in, um, listening to a brother, um, a Igbo brother, um, he said that um, chi, everything has a chi, right? So, um, so this is God here, right? Up here. And then God assigned different tasks to um, different angels to do different things which mean good health, prosperity, wealth, for everything, for eyesight, for everything. The, the, uh, what we understand and kind of, um, you know, you know, talking with Big Lee, you know, listening to Big Levi, Big Judah, and all the other brothers and sisters talk about, that's basically what they're saying, but they just, they just have a different language for it, right? So, um, where was I? Okay, Supreme, okay, Tass, okay. Now, what is the difference between Chi and um, Chuku? Okay, after Chuku, the Supreme God, and Allah, which is A-L-A, -A, is not the Allah that, you know, that um, the way they spell it, but it's still the same. But this Allah is, the, is, is, called, is supposed to be the mother of all. So there's Chuku, Chuku, and then Allah. So Chuku is the god, which is the male. Allah is also a god, goddess, which is the female, right? The woman. Uh, most important deity in Igbo mythology is the chi. Chuku can be translated as the great chi. The chi is part of Chuku that reside in human beings. What is the concept of chi in all things? Um, 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 in all things fall apart. The chi is an individual personal God, which merit is determined by the individual good fortune or lack thereof. Along the lines of this interpretation, one can explain um, this this thing, this guy, I think, I don't know if it's, it's a novel called Ukonku, um, Tragic Fate as a Result of the uh, Problematic Chi. So I guess he, there's a novel out there, uh, a thought that occurred in uh, Okuchuku at several points. In, in the novel, they talked about how um, because he's Chi, 
um, I guess was in a balance or whatever. So he ended up having problems. And I think that's what's happening to us. So it's still like the angels or spirit guides or ancestors and all that, right? Okay. So now what is the meaning of your chi? Chi has been interpreted as the evil personal life force, person life, personal life, guardian angel, creator, companion, individual, a providence, uh, portion out of out of life no portion out is that cut damn okay i think it's out portion out life principle yeah pushing out life principle it looked like a c a little bit it is also interpreted as a personal on oh no, a person's de deity identity in the spirit land which comprehends his um human identity how many gods does Ebo have? There are more than a hundred gods, but both, you know, small gods, you know, like angels and all them, right? So, and a big, a small, um, both um, uh, small and big. In Ebo culture, um, but for some reason, most people don't know anything about them except probably for one. So they, they don't know much about their gods except for one, just like us. Just like we now figuring things out, right? So so I'm sure they're probably figuring things out as well. Okay, what is the name of the first man, uh, first Igbo man? This is where it gets tricky. So listen. It, um, it, Eri, the godlike founder of Nri, is uh, believed to have settled the region around 948 with other related Igbo cultures following after in the 13th century. The first Ize, in Nri, king of Nri, uh, is Ifikua Nim, followed directly after him, according to Igbo oral tradition. This reign started in 1043. No, his reign started in 1043. Now, excuse me. What is the religion of the Igbo culture before colonization? The Igbo religion was a mixture of human and spirit spiritual being. The human category considered of the priests, the uh, diviners, um, and ritual elders who conduct religious worship and sacrifice to gods and goddesses. The, divin the divinities include ancestral spirit spirits and spirit of, of national heroes and other deities, right? Who is the father? Who is the father of Ebo? Eri. It is believed that the Ebo people descend from Eri, a divine uh, figure who, according, according to folklore, was sent from heaven to begin civilization. Eri was Eri was the son of, <clears throat> of God, and God was the son of Jacob from his concubine as mentioned in the Bible. So the Igbo people is a descendant of God, the Godites. Hmm. Let that sink in. Yeah. You know, the other day, the um, Mosai, the spirit told me that um, the thing is, Jacob has tw had uh, 13 children. And all those social t 13 children had children, right? And then their children had children. Understand that we were all over the place. We went to different places. We live in different places. And if you notice that the same concept everywhere, but we have a lot of us have different ways of praising the most high, right? But remember the most important thing, everybody had a priest, a high priest or high priestess or a priest. 
never not be part of our culture. Every single one of us had it, right? Group had it, whether it was the grandchildren or whatever. They always pick a, a priest to go somewhere. So when they go to that place, the place is not the same. So everybody worshiped differently. But remember, they worshiped that one God. They just have different ways of getting to that one God, you know, different way of, of worshiping that one God, but they still worshiping that one God. They just have different ways. Like, and, and the, um, when you go to the um, region of Africa, because of the way it is, where it's at in the, the, uh, the, the weather, the, the, the scenery, the, the energy over there, the, um, the, um, uh, na nature, nature, everything over there just let you, you know, show you that there's a different way that they worship, even though it's not that far fetched from the people in the Caribbean or even people here or people all over. There's, there's a, there's a core, there's a foundation, right? But there, with that, within that foundation that we have, there's, um, branches out of that foundation that comes and it's different, different colors. Let's have different colors. It doesn't mean they aren't colors. Is they are colors, but they just different colors. And then you can create what you get yellow and red and create orange. You get, I mean, come on, people, come on. White and orange, you create yellow. You see that that's that's what um the um religion that's how um not religion but our spirituality that's how it is we um within our different uh spiritual um practices is there's there's the a foundation we it depends on where we go and the resources that we have and the things that we 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 we, we get and then and what we remember and the spirit who's walking with us and and uh, that place also have spirit and the trees have spirit everything have a spirit so those spirit also um combine with our angels or chi or, or guardians to um create a way to worship the father because of of their um the area of vicinity of where they are at and the um the um what is the word the um nature <laughs> I, 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 it's not nature i know there's a better word um of the um environment yeah their environment right in the caribbean there's a different environment in africa there's a different environment here there's a different environment in the middle east and in asia in that area there's different environments so that's the diff that's the thing right so i mean let me read this again eerie is the is believed to be it is believed that the Igbo people descended from Eri, a divine uh, figure who, according to folklore, was sent from heaven to begin civil civilization. Eri was the son of God, and God was the was the son of uh, God was was one of the son of Jacob from his concubine as mentioned in the Bible. Now, I didn't go into the Bible, right, to um, to see that because I, I want you guys to go and check on, you know, for yourself, right? Because I think it's important. So now, what do, do um, Igbo call their God? They call Chimekele, Neihe, Me, Ndu, Mbetu Baha means God that does everything. Ifunanya chuku, ifunanya chuku means the love of God. Eze ifioma means king of future. Chuku ma mpa mpan means God who knows all my problems. So you see, no different. What is uh, spiritual spirit call? What is spirit call in Igbo? The spirit alusu alu, al, alusi are a powerful being who 
inhabit the three dimension of space, sky, earth, land, and water. In the sexual world, there are several categories of spirits. What God do the Igbo pray to? These deities are an, uh, Anya, Anyawu, Amadioha, Ahia Jaku, Ala, Ibini, Upabi, Equensu, Equensu, Ag, Agu, and, um, mm, Num, Num, and Marie, Miri. I hope I'm pronouncing them right. You know, me and my pronunciations. The, li the literal meaning, um, An Anyawu means the sun, and the Igbo tradition religion is referred to the god of the sun or the sun god, who is referred to as the eyes of the light. What god did the Igbo worship to Igbo worship many gods like Ani, uh, the goddess of fertility and the earth um, and uh, Amai, Ami Adora, the god of thunder, lightning in the sky. They also worship their own personal god known as Chi. Now I have to I have to say I I don't I know some Igbo people I don't think that I don't I don't I think that when people recognize and they show they um they show appreciation and then the stuff they twist it kind of like what what we do and how we calling on the spirit calling on the angels and our ancestors they call it worshiping but they only worship one God they don't worship those gods they just appreciate them because. Because they they call on them, they 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 honor them. But God is still the the number one source, and I think that they they always mis um misinterpret everything, right? To me, okay, she is primarily a personal guiding guiding spirit, not the supreme. Okay, you hear that? It's not the supreme. is a is a guiding spirit, right? Like the angel, being being, but rather the most powerful and and invisible force which the traditional Igbo believe to be acting on each individual human being. Now, let's talk about now. We're going to get into the Chinese, so that's where I'm going to go with the feng shui. Now, what is what is the power of qi? Okay, and in, in traditional Chinese medicine, qi was believed to be the life force and run through each individual. Chi is an energy. You see where they where they 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 sagger, <laughs> they sagger jack the Igbo people, but they switch it to where they call it energy versus the angels, right? The the spirit guide, the angel. Just like instead of saying people saying, "Oh, it's the spirit," they call it energy. But spirits are they are energy, but they still saying the same thing, but they change the words. So it's the wording that people change to make you think otherwise. But it's still the same. Don't 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 fall for the okie doke. That I guess that's what I'm trying to say, right? That passes through the inside and outside of the body, and also through physical object too. When again, to physical object, right? The spirit. When your chi is strong, it, 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 it courses through you and fill you with life and health. What is chi? So now we we looking at what the, um, the Chinese look at chi to be. I may do a second video um, with the feng shui just so because I don't want this to be so long. You know what I mean? And, and uh, okay, well, I did that. Oh, no, okay, what is qi? In traditional Chinese medicine, qi was believed to be the force. Oh, okay, I read that, right? Um, individual life force. Okay, um, 
So chi is the energy currently passed through. Okay, I did that to um, strong, of course, life. Okay, when, I guess I combined the two. When your chi is weak, it, it remains still and, and stagnant within your body. When, uh, when translate into English, chi literally means air or energy. You guys kind of get it, right? Chi also exists in other cultures. It's known as prana in India, ki in Japan, and Western society is often referred to as life force. <laughs> these people, these people, man, these people. You may have also heard of chi being referred to as ki. And while the two are very similar and in Chirlank, they are technically separate entities, which while Ki referred to as the actual act of restoring balance, Chi is the physical force and energy that flows through us. Chi is thought to be the ultimate measure of, of vitality. Due to this, many use Chi as a way to restore the mind and body to a neutral, healthy state it is a way of achieving Zen and finding balance. The practice improving, the practice of improving your chi con is connected to the philosophy of feng shui. Feng shui, right? It is manifest. It's manifested um, as the five element of fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. The goal of feng shui is, um, is to ensure that these elements interact in harmony with each other and maintain the flow of qi energy. As with, the ener with any energy, qi cannot be created or destroy. It is in a constant state of flock, oh no, flocks, flowing, evolving, and shifting into another form. Why is chi important? It is believed that having a strong chi energy can have a positive effect on your mental and physical health and prevent the stress from everyday life impacting our being. Having a weak chi energy makes us more susceptible, 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 I just said it, susceptible, susceptible, oh my God, okay susceptible to negativity, which can cause our health, happiness, and overall life to de deteriorate. Chinese culture believed that qi in the air that we breathe and the uh, nourishment that we put into our bodies, it moves with our blood and becomes a part of us to link the mind, the body, and spirit. As it carries to our brain, it can affect our dreams, emotion, and thoughts too. It, it, it depend, it extends beyond our bodies and becoming something that, that metaphysical as a, as well as a vet, um, is it? Ves, vessel. So, so, uh, so, so chi, okay, so to me, the way they're explaining this with the Chinese um, way of, of doing it, it's like, it sounds slightly different, but it's still the same concept when you boil it down to, they just using different words and, and trying to take you to di you know, different, it's kind of like, um, like you, you trying to, you, you know, you're supposed to go to, um, 
let's say you um you're trying to get from uh new york to no you're trying to get from here to canada right and you in california so there's two ways you can get to canada and california um but so instead of giving you the two ways and they very very quick they much quicker than going to new york or going to boston to get to you know going to um where, where um i think denver is it denver where um there's several ways you can several states you can go you can get to to go to canada right but it, and you're trying to get to victoria canada but if you try or, or um or you're trying to get to or um, Vancouver, Canada. But you know, if you go to drive to Portland, Oregon, to Washington State, um, past Seattle, you go straight, you get to Canada, you get to Vancouver, Canada, and that's the quickest way. But then you have somebody telling you no. You would have to go all the way to New York, drive to, I think, um, uh, is it Boston to go to Montreal, Canada, which is way up. And then for you to go way down to go back to get to Vancouver, Canada, when you could have just gone to, to Seattle, Washington, you go to Portland, Oregon, to Seattle, Washington, and boom, you there. Uh, so that's, that's what I think that this, this is doing they they trying to confuse you and make it seem like it's a different thing but it's still the same to me what affect your chi energy as chi is all about achieving an um optimum mental and physical state any factor that hinder or pre, um, prevent your body from functioning properly can affect your chi Things like not getting enough sleep, not feeding your body with the nourishment that it needs, a lack of clean water, fresh air, and shelter can cause your chi energy to weaken. If you're not getting enough mental stimulation, love, and social um, interaction, this can also create uh, an imbalance to your chi. Now, what I want to say to you guys, though, is those of you, especially the elderly, those of you who are uh, who are um, who can't walk, walk or, or is not doing um, any exercise or stretches, please um, try to stretch and also use like um, tennis balls or or um, hard um, foam um, uh, rollers. Roll a towel. Use a towel. Roll a towel and tie it up and use it to roll over your body to to kind of um, uh, massage, kind of like you, it's like you roll in a dough to smooth out the the excess, um, the uh, um, energy that is balled up. Like, you know, the like from, from tension and stress, even your neck and all that, you see like you get all the knots right here. Your whole body gets that. So get something and roll and roll it around your arm, roll it. It helps also help you smooth your skin. It's like brushing, you know, dry brushing. It's good to dry brush your body, you know, and do stuff like that to keep your body um, going, especially if you're not in a relationship or if you're not being touched or if you're not, you know, um, um, because we need touch, we need the physical um, connection with each other. We're not getting that, so you need to have that, okay? Because it's very important, you know, even a hug. You know, you get a hug from someone, um, it just feel like, you know, you just, a lot of stuff um, get out of you, believe it or not. So, you know, it's just, I used to just um, go to the elderly and, and just be around them and just do that on my own, you know, just because I know that a lot of elderlies don't get that. They don't get a conversation and stuff like that. So if you guys... Um, going through something like that please trying to trying to um figure out a way to get that done don't don't be one of those people who don't who's not um you know um being a who st stop being around people because we need each other just a side thing side note um it's also possible to have too much chi this can be because of on intense and excessive amount of environment toxic like pollution in the air and water
putting too much strain on your body through physical exercise stress and negative energy can also amount to have too much chi and cause blockages within your, your bodies. They, these blockages prevent chi energy from flowing um, freely around us and mean that chi is unable to nourish all areas. How to balance your chi energy? So how do you balance your chi energy? With patience, we can um, cultivate our chi energy to help to to help it to flow more steadily. This is achieving by this is achieved by regular doing exercise regular regularly. What is going on? Regularly doing this was a weird. This is so weird. Something just happened. So weird, you guys. <sighs> wow. Where was I? Um, oh, okay. Regular do, regularly doing exercises that stimulate the mind and the body. Here are some, a few exercises. So like um, Tai Chi, like I said, Tai Chi originally developed as a form of martial art. Tai Chi has now um, evolved as a series of exercise combined with deep breathing technique easily identified by its low impact flowing movements, Tai Chi thought um, to improve balance, posture, circulation, muscle control. And muscle control, it also can help strengthen your core, arm, legs, and back. So um, I think that that's a good idea. The gentle but um, deliberate motion that makes up Tai Chi helps you to work on self-discipline. The um, sort um, slow series of okay exercise um, is gr exercise is great restoring your chi and keeping blockages at bay. Yoga is another one. Um, I don't want to read the breathing exercise is another one. Meditation, um, diet, rest, chi at home, balancing your chi at home. Bassanero chi come from comes from within. It comes from your surroundings too, like in your body. Um, chi should be able to flow freely, and then you know in your home as well. So we're gonna talk about um, feng shui. So I, I didn't want to talk so much about rest resting. You know, guys, you no, know, you gotta rest, and then your diet gotta be better, and you know, like your air and the food that you eat. Everything have to be, you know, at I, at a good point, you know. So maybe I should just just do the the whole video and then uh, jump into what is feng shui. Mm. A guiding to creating good energy in your home, right? That's what feng shui basically is, right? So now let's see. Um, I want to. Okay. Now, okay, feng shui, um, helps to create a more positive environment through scientific, scientific research and lacking, and I don't know, whatever. So, ever, you, okay, so even feng shui, you, when you build in a home, you can even build your, your home you know, to be feng shui. So that way you, you know, you can have a feng shui home. But however, um, if you don't, if you can't afford to build a home, then I'll give you some ideas on how you can do feng shui, right? Okay, let's see. Have you ever noticed? Okay. Okay, so let me let me do this, right? Have you ever noticed how people are how people use architectural or home terms to describe their problem in their life? I'm running into a brick wall. I am so drained all the time. I feel like I'm um I'm backed into a corner.
So your pers your pers um, perception of your environment can determine how you think and believe in life. Say, so let's say this, right? Um, I don't know if I said that, and I thought I did, but um, yeah, I did. I talked about how um, how your day. When you wake up in the morning, you talk to yourself and you tell yourself you're going to have a good day. That day determine your whole year and also determine your health. Right? So feng shui to me is almost the same way, right? So, okay. And that's, okay. So feng shui comes in as a tool to help. You design a space that makes you feel good, powerful, and supported in your health and well wellness goal, right? So if we are doing feng shui when we when we know that basically we um feng shui with yourself, you have to remove clutters. That means stop thinking, stop worrying, and stop, you know, having all these negative beliefs because then they're going to be part of you, right? And that's gonna keep you down. It's, it's gonna stop you from growing so that means that you're gonna have problems you won't think straight and this and that right all these different negative negative energies got negative stuff spirit gonna be attracted so they're gonna keep you down right so then you won't have a good day then you're not gonna have a good good health then the whole your whole year is gonna be screwed up right so then feng shui for yourself is like uncluttering all those things right removing all those things and then and then you come to, um, you know, making sure your body is, 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 is healthy, is good. So you do stretches, you do some exercise to keep you going. Because if you don't use it, you're going to lose it, right? So move. You got to move, right? And um, so that that is feng shui for your body, right? But then you have to also mimic that with your home, mimic that with your with your, with your, in your car, and also with the people around you. You also have to do function with the people around you. Okay? So, rooted in ancient Chinese culture, especially in uh, um, Taoism, feng shui is the arrangement of building and objects and the organization of space within a room to create harmony and balance, right? While balance and energy are important in today's feng shui practices, a more modern interpretation of the approach is the use of items, colors, or placement to um, reprogram your subconscious to align with a healthier mindset. So you see about subconscious, your subconscious is the one that makes automatic decision. You know, the, your your subconscious is, is your memory. It's what remember things. Even if you don't recognize it now, but if you hear something long enough, and when you go there, you're going to, when you hear it again or you see it, you're going to go automatic to that, right? Because that you've been, you hear it, right? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why this came like that. I know when you're doing this, when I'm doing this, it takes a lot out of me because the spirits are with me. A lot of spirits are with me. So I get really exhausted doing this because it's very spiritual, right? So we have to also keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. The, the exterior of the home or work environment influences the interior of the person. So whether you're um, spending more time at home, th um, thanks to um, whatever the pandemic, sitting up um, multi-use space like a bedroom office or TV room, gym, or simply trying to create a positive um, place where you can um, practice self-care. Mm. Wow. I apologize that what are the principles of um, feng shui feng shui speak in metaphors 
right? And learning about feng shui, you you likely come across many of these um, phases and symbol. Think of this as a beginning inclusion of this concept. Yang and Yang energy. This refers to the Chinese philosophy that there are opposite and con uh, contemporary energies, com oh, com complementary energies, for example, feminine and masculine, dark and light, cold and warm, right? You need both in a room to create balance. So we need the darkness as much as we need the light, you know? The five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water are the basic um, energy category in feng shui. Now, I'm going to read some other stuff that's going to probably add a little bit to that. Each element affects how you feel in the space, an object in the room features can um, belong to one or uh, more, to one or more element categories. I don't know why I feel so tired. Whew. Okay, the Bagu map. The Bagu um, derived from Mandarin um, Chinese, I guess, or Bagua, Bagua means eight areas for for practical pr purposes feng shui pr practitioners will usually this divide the room into nine areas um except um su supreme pose the grid like bagua map bagu map or compass over a floor a floor plan or a room in your home as guided as guided for setting up your space every area correspond to um, certain life um, experience such as career health and family as well as shapes elements and colors to focus on within each colors within each so colors the um Bagua map can help you determine what colors to bring into the space. For example, wealth and aband abundance area of your home, perhaps your home office, could include purple, green, and some blues, as these colors are traditionally linked to the energy of prosperity. The common area position, commoning area position, the commending area position. This is one of a more basic principle. You can use these, um, this to decide whether to put dark, no desk, bed, or, or chains in the room. Desk should have a clear view of the doorway, which I have now. I have a clue, clear view of my doorway. Um, where was I? Uh, a doorway that leads into the room if possible. Having a wall free of furniture and directly behind you while you're working is another plus. The, the, those wall represent the mountain that supports your back and um, give you um, confidence as you making decision in business, right? Mirror. You can use mirrors strategically when you um, when you might not otherwise be able to follow feng shui principle. For example, if you must set up your desk with your back to the doorway, you can use a mirror to provide a view behind you so that you can see, you can watch your back. Like, you know how in a restaurant, I don't know if you guys does this, but in a restaurant, when I go to a restaurant, I don't try to, I don't sit, I don't put, give my back to the, if I can help it, I put my back to the wall. 
so I can see the front. So I can see who's coming in. You know? Because you don't know. Um... There are there are certain places where you cannot, you may not want to place a mirror. Mirrors equal water, so watch where they they are placed. Add, um, for instance, a mirror above your head, above your bed, or hang above nose level is not appropriate because you want to keep your head above water. Hmm. This metaphor referred to avoiding debt or losing money on your home. Poor mirror placement may also make it feel more difficult to get up in the morning. Wow. That that said, on a mirror placement may differ from person to person. With that said, okay, that said. Common questions and answers. Okay, we're not going to go there. What are the purpose and benefits of feng shui? Okay. People think they are immune to their environment. That is not true. Feng shui is a form of self-help. This is what fixing your house. This isn't, okay, this isn't about fixing your house. It's about setting up your home to encourage the life you want to have. If you set, if you sit with your back to the to a door, you might not feel safe in the space. So subconsciously, this is about subconscious, right? If you if you have your back to the space, your spirit, your body does not feel safe. So you don't feel secure. Because you constantly, you have to, your spirit constantly thinking, even though you may not even notice it. Remember, subconscious, right? So you don't want to do that, right? Right. The idea is that by changing the way you perceive your environment, you can also change how you think and believe in it. Ultimately, this, this can help you align your thoughts and action in a healthier way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Transforming the energy into the room can also shift or turn around your eternal um, energy, help you look at life differently and bring benefit like feeling of safety, calm, peace, support, and more power or control in your life. Home should be a recharge. It should be a place where you come in and feel embraced. So I always um, tell people it's important that when you come home, home feel, you know, yeah, it feels, it, it gives you a hug. It, 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 it is a comfort place. It's comfort. Where you have all the, you know, you have, um, I have, my home is very colorful. I, you know, um, the walls are gray and, and white. The ceilings are white, you know, white and then gray walls. So, but I have colors on my windows. I have colors everywhere because it's important to add colors into your life, right? So, so you have to make sure your environment is safe. Right, you don't leave um sharp sharp um object around. You don't leave stuff around that you know that's gonna that will um affect you. You know, so I think you know that's that's what I think that they um they talking about. You know, this uh, lady who's an expert. Her name is Corona uh, Serona, Ser Serrano Serrano. That's her last name, Serrano. So people who um, follows the principle of feng shui attest to creating this um, welcoming energy in their home. And this, and this, okay, and this in turn is thought to support their emotional wellness. Overall, the goal of feng shui is to design an environment to that promote psychological well-being which is important, right? So obviously there's no, you know, we don't believe in all that 
research publish thing because spirituality isn't logical like my friend told me spirituality is not logical so a lot of time people are trying to trying to turn it into a logic trying to pick make not lo logic into excuse me spirituality but you have nothing to do with that functional environment principle include the people who have control over their environment but the claim okay what are the limitations of feng shui? While, feng, while many people are surprised by the effect that feng shui has on their life, it's not a magic wand for the trouble in your life. Um, um, there are many layers to a healing process. Feng shui can be one of those. So feng shui, like I said, feng shui is, is one set for your home, right? Is the setup for your home. Um, that doesn't mean that you still have to add colors. You still have to add, you know, the elements, you know, the, the, the water and the, there still have to be fire. So we need to have all that in our space in our home. Because if you notice back in the days, we used to live in huts or um, in uh, places, they were big places, but they were more open more open to nature. We would share the places with nature. You know, we had the, the um, they built the places where they had the elements inside as well as outside and very close to us. But now it's like some of us are very far away from like, there's some people um, that, especially in San Francisco, for example, hardly any trees. When I used to do, um, when I used to um, be uh, work for the union, um, you know, in back in like 2000, um, the 2000, yeah, 2000, what was it? 2005, six, 2000. When I used to work for the union, I would go to San Francisco and they would put like concrete around trees. They would cover the, um, root of the trees with concrete. And then I would literally see the, the like blood coming out, like blood, like, um, so, you know, the, the sap that the tree have, it would be color, the color of blood. And I would like, I don't know. I didn't know, uh, understand. Like I said, I, I had this gift since I was a little girl. So I didn't, I still was struggling with that. And it was really horrifying. And the energy that I got, the feeling I got from the trees, they were crying. They were crying out for help. And, and I heard them. So I would go to them. I was like, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. They, are, they were crying. I would literally hear the trees crying for help because they had concrete covered their, their roots. And they couldn't breathe. And they just left a little hole you know, with um, that you could see, but concrete was, can you imagine concrete being on top of you and uh, cover your whole body except for your head and your neck? <laughs> I would go to the trees and, and give them hugs and talk to them and let them know that I love them and then I'm sorry for what's going on. And then I would go on the road because there were people there that I needed to talk to. I would be on the road talking to them and let them know that I loved them. And they came down, but those trees was not very happy. And it was so sad. Wow, that was so sad. So, so, you know, you still have to add elements, all these things in order for you to have a balanced life and a balanced um, home, right? And that's why it's important to have like different plants. Um, you know what I mean? In your, in your home. Maybe I should bring some plants that you can have in your home that to, to help clean the air and stuff like that. Okay. Maybe I'll do something like that. Okay. So how do you practice function in different part of your home? I don't want this video to be, to be long, but I want you guys to at least go and, and go and check out, you know, check out some, um, uh, stuff on feng shui, right? Feng shui has many principles and it's, it, it can be thought to understand how to apply to them in your um, existing space and, uh, um, and the feminine um, 
Oh, and the furniture and item within within it. You might be you might also be unsure whether it's okay to to break some rules um unexpected and um oh and feng shui can offer you um valuable guidance oh an expert in feng shui can yeah so if you find an expert in feng shui but you know those expert you can be an expert you can go and do your research so because because again hiring different people getting stuff from different people can can you can attract different energies. So just um, do your thing, do your research. And if there is a feng shui person around you, the um, expert or uh, practitioner you wanna you wanna um, get to help you, make sure you pray about it, do your due diligence so you can, so you won't have to bring, so you won't bring the wrong spirit into your home, okay? Just like you, you wanna bring good spirit. So if you having people that's not supposed to be around you, they can bring bad spirit. So just keep that in mind. You can search, you know, for one and yeah, okay. The bedroom, right? The bedroom um, has two functions, sleep and passion or relationship building. So to um to that end, remove um workout equipment, um, ironing boards and um hobby gears, you know, hobbies like hobby gears like sewing kids and musical instrument from your bedroom, plus add um no no one I should be in the in the bedroom so that that means that something that I always I grew up with and and with my my parents that your bedroom should no nobody should be able to get to have to um see your bedroom um because that's really intimate that's a lot of stuff there that's a lot of energy especially if you're married um you know, you have, there's a lot of intimacy. There's it's a, people can read, people can read through energy. People can read, go in your room and, and do a reading. People can go in your house, they do a reading. So that's why it's important that you don't allow people to go in your bedroom or see your bedroom because that person energy is going to be in your bedroom as well. And then that, the next thing you know, you're having problems with your spouse or, you know, the sex is not there. Stuff happening. You don't understand why. <laughs> And then you realize, you know, if you're getting into your spiritual stuff, then you start to finding out that, oh my God, somebody has stolen my, you know, like kind of like your star, stolen your, your good vibe and then take it to their, their home. The next thing, their relationship is going great and yours is going sour. So be careful with that. Um, other than those of the people sleeping there. Take anything that could represent an eye, such as a sculpture or or a photo of a family, um, out of the room. So, don't put photos with looking with your eyes into your bedroom. You can put like flowers, you know, um, pictures and other stuff, but don't put no um, sculptures or put figures that have eyes to see people can use that to spiritually um, spy on you believe it or not all right so that's the bedroom living room a position facing a door or entryway is considered empowering or commanding and you should arrange your furniture in that position otherwise um in that position that means placing chairs to there and your back is against a solid wall, not floating in the middle of the room. You should be able to see who's coming in, but should not be directly in line with the doorway. It's kind of like, let's say uh, you have your, your, your front door, you know, when they open your front door and some people, the first thing you see is their couch. Um, you, it, your fr you, that shouldn't be, you know what I mean? Because if somebody see see you, it's kind it's kind of it's it's like a, a protection. It's like a, a a strategic protection in your home and physical protection, right? You you um place. It's kind of like you're going in battle, right? You placing different things in a way where you can look at people, but they can't see you directly. You know that that's you know that's kind of what it is, right? Kitchen. 
decluttering is important in feng shui. So if you have a lot of stuff in your home, please uh, make minimize it because it's um, like you know stuff that's not that that can be removed. Like you know to have a lot of stuff like I do here, my desk, which I need to to do better. Please um, do that, and um, we'll do it together. And that applies to any room in your room in your home. The kitchen is a good place to begin. Start by clearing an um, expired or unused item. Um, out of the pantry and refrigerator and get rid of single use uh, uh, appliances and tools that you never cook with. Space equal opportunity, say Carter, by, by getting um, rid of things, you clear the way for other things to come in your life. Bathroom, if your bathroom shares a wall with, with your bedroom, with your bed headboard, Place a mirror on the on the bathroom wall facing um, outward to push out the down to down the drain <clears throat> the down the drain energy created by the plumbing saying uh, within the bathroom itself. Make sure it's place it's a place that feels relaxing and 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 nice to be to be in. Okay, you uh, you can do this any way you see fit, whether that's with flush towels, a nice candle, or relaxing paint, paint of colors. Home office first. Try to place your desk in a commanding position like I have. Um, then take up take a look at the things you have hanging on the wall. If there there are water features in the and any of the art of pic or pictures, the water line is higher than your nose. You may uh, feel as if you're underwater. So, so uh, any any mirror shouldn't be on top; should be low. So anything that that have um, water pictures, it should be because but the feng shui is targeting your 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 subconscious that's what it's doing it's targeting your your subconscious um self uh, your subconscious to keep you safe because your subconscious is the one that's creating the the unease because you might not be aware of what you see in right away but your subconscious would be aware of it and would see it and will be like uh-uh I don't want that. That's what makes you sometimes uncomfortable. That's what um, make you um, bring fears because your subconscious remember things, right? So the uh, feng shui is targeting your subconscious so you can be at rest, okay? Be at rest because when, when your subconscious is comfortable, is at is at peace, and um, it means you know your memory is at peace, then you good, right? Um, okay. Drowning among your responsibilities or chaos, um, chaotic um, and disorganized. Place water items, um, images in the way they found in nature. We do, we do not, we don't normally live lower than water. Some of us, right? So, so, um, so. So right now, how things are outside in the environment, like when you walk, you get the water is under you. So that means you are you are in control, like you commending, like you the one who's who's um, controlling them, right? But when you put it higher than you, then it's like it's controlling you. Kind of like when you meet someone who's tall, you feel that person is, you know, higher than you because you're short. But if you were in heels and then you stand tall, then it's like you and that person become equals. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but that's basically what I'm what I'm getting, right? Okay. Feng shui is an ancient Chinese practice that is modern by the application is used today to help people design space that support feeling of comfort and safety. Many people include feng shui um, expert um, 
count the um, a, a accidental benefit of using and practicing guide and design of living space. So let me see if I can even bring. Okay, so the definition of feng shui is what? Living space created balance. Okay, feng shui is a practice of arranging the pieces and living space to places to create balance within with the natural world. This is what it means to feng shui your home. The goal is to harness energy forces and establish harmony between an individual and their environment. So basically you want to make sure your environment and and you are connect you connecting with your environment, right? And your environment is not against you and you're not against your environment because you have to be there every day. In um, Asian culture, the philosophy is called the Tao, excuse me, Tao, which um, translates to mean the way. Ta Taoism is the way of nature and all the basic rules of feng shui reflect nature. Here's a look at some principle, okay. Common position. Um, I wish I can show you guys some of those pictures. Okay, there's the common position and there's the feng shui um, bagua, bagua, bagua map, map. So the bagua map have a purple, they have the color purple and have wealth and they have fame and the star, which is red. They have partnership, a heart, which is pink. Um, so purple and white, red and in uh, like a peach color, um, brown light brown light with a pink color family green with a light green and dark green um tai chi which is brown and yellow children which is gray and white um helpful people which um white and gray and a heart uh career which is um black and brown a little bit light 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 brown um, knowledge, which is purple background, like a um, bluish purple with um, with blue, light blue. So family, Zen, they um, represent family, new beginning, space, uh, color more re or rectangle, color green, blue, teal, um, season, spring, number four. Yang Wood, um, Wealth, Zing represent wealth, abundance, prosperity, uh, rectangle, Kalium, Kalimor, Kalium, Kalimor, rectangle, color purple, um, season, uh, spring, number five, Yang Wood, rectangle, no, represent, oh, I'm sorry, health, Tai Chi, represent Over, um, overall wellness is the, in, the, the center, flat, square, brown, orange, yellow, transition between the seasons, five, and earth. The element is earth. Helpful people, um, uh, Qan, Qan, like, yeah. Helpful people, benefit, benefactors, travel, um, circular um, spiral, what is it? Spherical, gray, metallic, autumn six, yang metal. Children, Dewey. Children, completion, joy, circulation, spherical, white, metallic, autumn seven, element, yang metal. Knowledge, gen, gen. Knowledge, self-cultivation, skillful, flat, square, dark blue, transition between the season, eight, number eight. Um, that's the, the, the outline that I'm going to see if I can just download that and you guys can see it. Um, Yang Earth. Um, fame, represent fame, reputation, passion, vitality, visibility. Triangle, pointy, red, summer, nine, fire. The element is fire. Career, no career. P 
path in life, wavy, curvy, black, winter, one, water. Partnership, represent partnership, marriage, self-care, shape, flat, square, color, pink, trans, uh, transition between the season to uh, yang, earth. So the five element, wood, fire, earth, metal, water, and metal. Those are the five elements, okay? So wood quality is expensive. On wood, rectangle, green, blue, spring, family, wealth, that's the area. Fire, qualities, passion, illumination, brilliance, um, triangle, pointy, uh, color red, season, summer, area, fame. Earth, qualities, uh, grounded, self-care, stable, shape, flat, square, colors, colors, brown, orange, yellow, season transition between the season, area, health, knowledge, and partnership. Water, qu um, quality, downward, um, flowing, shifting, shape, wavy, curvy, black, colored black, season, winter, area, career, qualities, of the metal, um, efficient, um, precise beauty, um, shape, um, circular, circular, spherical, um, color white, metallic, um, season autumn, area helpful people and children. So you guys, um, oh, they have it right here. So you guys, um, please um, do some basic um, research on um, feng shui, some more research on feng shui. Sorry, this video is, is pretty long. Um, do some uh, research on your own um, f with feng shui. Feng shui help you balance blood sugar, you know, um, it helps with strong, strengthen your immune system, lower depression, and reduce anxiety. Okay, so you everything is good, right? We can never have too much of something. Okay, Whew. remember, you guys, I love you, our spirit guide, and our ancestors, and the laws, and the angel love you more than I do. But the Father, the Father love us way more, okay? So I love you guys so much. And please keep in mind to always do some more research. And remember, let's focus on our subconscious so we can do better and make better decisions and focus on, on um, the Father more and listen to what the Father is trying to tell us because right now things are change shifting so quickly and so hard that... Is scary, okay? All praises and glory to the Father. Ciao.